All right, so let's talk about some things. And and while the title of this is actually time to jumpstart your business, um, the reality is these are things that everybody needs to be doing all along. And it's interesting when when things get tough and business changes, um, whether it's the economy or in this case, the pandemic, we all do things that we probably should have been doing all along. Uh, just one of my most favorite quotes, which absolutely says exactly what's going on right now and what we all need to do. Your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. And it's old basic stuff from Zig Ziglar. And truthfully, we are back to basics in a way. Now, the vehicle to, to enhance those basics is the Internet, is cyberspace, is social media, um, the phone is back with a vengeance in terms of helping to build relationships and make con- make contact. But the principles behind it haven't changed since Zig Ziglar and long before him. So one of the issues that I've been talking a lot with both businesses and especially photographers is you've got to maintain your relationship with your clients. So even though you may be hunkered down, and I have to laugh because the word, even the expression hunkered down wasn't in my vocabulary very often until 90 days ago. Uh, You've got to maintain that relationship. You can't just disappear. The fact that we've all got to shelter in place is more about our personal health and safety. It doesn't mean we've got to shelter in place in terms of things we can still do with our business. And I know Dave and I know a lot of different photographers out there that have taken this as, oh my God, I can't talk to my clients anymore. You know, I'm now shut down. The reality is that because of social media, everyone's reach now um, has the potential to be huge. I mean, people have the a, a level of reach, again, because of social media that just a few years ago was limited strictly to newspapers and magazines. And now you've got that ability to be able to touch um, through social media more clients, your friends, you've got associates and partnerships, you've got the community. And then you've got good old, just the good old phone, um, email, even snail mail is back with a vengeance, at least for those people that are willing to go to their mailbox. So vendors and friends, the community. When I talk about expanding your reach, I am a huge fan of blogging. And if you think about your blog, uh, a blog enhances your message more. It's almost the same as when I say the old days, going back 90 days ago. Um, if you if you read a story online about a company, I mean, we called it publicity. If you read, if there was an article in the newspaper, the point is that that publicity enhances your advertising. Well, your blog can do the same thing. So when I'm talking about the need to continue to expand your reach, it's utilizing a blog, partnerships with other companies, social media, and then owning your zip code. Now, owning your zip code is nothing more than literally. Uh, knocking on doors. And you can do it in social media. You can also do it to a point where you can maintain social distancing and at the same time uh, be able to meet other people in the community. Partnerships have become a huge part right now. And it's because they're always a win-win. And I'll give you an example in just a second. Um, When you do a partnership and and think of a postcard, for example, you're going to do a six by nine, an oversized postcard And as a photographer, for example, you might bring in two other companies. You might bring in a a florist and you might bring in a venue. Um, You've got the ability for the three of you to share the cost of production in a postcard. Each partner becomes an ambassador and you wind up because you're reducing costs. You're also helping cash flow, getting your message out there. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Madrid, not Madrid. But Madrid is in New Mexico. It's in between Albuquerque and Santa Fe. These are the mailboxes there. When it comes to direct mail, direct mail has kind of seen a new life again because it's another way for you to be able to reach people. And again, if you're bringing in two to three partners, you're all targeting the same audience and you're sharing the cost, you've got an opportunity to get get a message out there. So that postcard, your cost reduces while your exposure increases. Again, your partners become ambassadors. I talked about already the pop, uh, postcards being split into thirds. And the reality is you don't necessarily need any kind of promotion. Now, I'm a big fan of 
companies that have the same target working together. So for example, a photographer, a florist, a venue, um, just being able to let people know that you're out there and there are programs going on. But at the same time, a, a florist, for example, being able to offer a discount coupon that relates to a photographer in town and a photographer in town being able to offer something that bounces back to a florist or a restaurant. There's no other slide but this one on this particular topic. Everybody has to look at what it is you're selling. Is it exciting or is it something that would put a rock to sleep? And that sadly, there's so many of us that are often too close to our own business. So we think what we've got is very dynamic, but we've missed the message in getting it out to our target audience and helping them understand what it is that we're selling and what it is we're doing. So I really want to hit most of this on the importance of blogging. I mentioned before, your website is what you're selling. It's your products, your services. Then you've got the other end is, is you. It's your reputation. It's your skill set. It's the support for the community. And just as much as it, as it is you, it's also what your business is. And then your blog, to me, is kind of the mortar in between. It's all about what's in your heart. I mentioned this before. Your website is about what you sell. Your blog is about what's in your heart. And what I love about this right now, especially and most importantly for business owners, is that having a blog helps you get your message out there again about what's in your heart. And it does, it does tend to function very similar to publicity. Now, when you look at everybody's problems in blogging, and I don't know enough about you guys to know how often you're blogging and if you're even blogging at all. But the problems that everyone tends to face, one is consistency. Um, another one is irrelevant content. Another is bad writing skills. You're posting things that are too long. You're posting things that are boring. You haven't built up a stash of posts. And then everybody always says to me, somebody always says, this is especially true with photographers. Well, there's nothing to write about. Well, the reality is on consistency, Unless you're posting at least twice a week, I wouldn't even bother to have a blog. So pick the same days, the same times, and go ahead and do and put a post out. Now, posts don't have to be long, and we'll get to that in a second. But by posting twice a week, you're giving the spiders on the internet fresh content to search for. So when somebody is searching for somebody, and let's talk about, um, I don't know, let's talk about restaurants, and somebody's looking for a particular restaurant. Obviously, you want to see images of the restaurant. You want to know what they serve. You want to know what the quality of their food is like. You want to find out. I use TripAdvisor a lot. In fact, I've got, I don't know, I've got over 150,000 reads over the years, which is something that started a long time ago. But by posting twice a week, I'm putting fresh content out there. And again, same day each week, same general time. And next to think about is who's your readership. And this goes back to what kind of content. Your content has got to be relevant, which is a bullet down below, but your content has to be relevant to your readership. Um, as a restaurant owner, it might be sharing some recipes. It might be talking about things you're doing that are different to maintain social distancing and good health. Um, it might be specials that you've got. I know there's a restaurant here in um, Osprey, Florida, that on Tuesdays, it's a buy one entree and get the second entree, I think, at half off or something like that. And it's just a fun little cafe, but they're trying to give people some specials to have in there. And they're paying attention to who their readership is. Um, so often I will see a photographer talking about something that's totally irrelevant to the audience. Now, for those of you that hate to write, hire a writer. And when I say hire a writer, it doesn't have to be big bucks. Go to the local high school, junior high school, find yourself, find yourself an A student in English, or for that matter, talk to the English teachers and see if you've got a teacher that wants to do a little moonlighting. Now, obviously, they're going to write what you want them to write. So the whole skill set involves doing a short interview, interview with you. It might be about your business. It might be about a specific topic. It might be about something you're sponsoring in the community. They're going to write it up. You're going to keep it to 50 to 400 words. Now, Dave and I both know that a picture really is worth a thousand words, but everybody's got to be reminded, if you've got a photograph in there, then you don't need to spend 
paragraph after paragraph telling people what it is. A picture really is worth a thousand words. So with each one of those blog posts, you should always have an image. I already mentioned being relevant. And the reality is there's plenty to write about. Think about all the things that are going on in the community right now. And while the pandemic, while there's no question the pandemic has created some serious challenges that are a liability for everybody, it's also created some interesting opportunities for people to literally stand out and be leaders. And that's kind of going to wrap it up. Um, the point is to have fun. I happen to love a blog. If you look at what Amazon did early on, um, Zappos, um, I used to, in fact, I still buy a pair of shoes now and then from Zappos online. The fact is that in both cases, senior management made it a point to maintain a blog about what they were doing in the business. Um, let's see. So for me to get out of this, Dave, I might need you here. Let's go. Okay. There we go. I'm back, I think. There you go. Yes. I'm back. Thank you. And I would add, in terms of, you talked about the content for people to put on their blog post. Uh, the same companies that aren't blogging are posting things to their Facebook page. And I often tell people, instead of posting that link to your Facebook page, post it in your blog or post it in your blog also. If it works on Facebook, it can be a link to an industry site on your blog too. Google finds that and, and it's some source of content and ideas to put on someone's blog without having to write 400 words. Yeah. In fact, Darren just asked if I recommend video or writing blogs. I recommend both. It's, it's a good mix. The, the point of a good blog right now is uh, good content is king. And there's a great line I got from a gentleman by the name of Ed Foreman going back, oh, must be more, over 30 years ago at Polaroid, who came in and spoke to us. He's a marketing motivational speaker. And his line was, if I can see the world through my client's eyes, then I can sell my client what my client buys. Now, everybody always says to me, well, there's no difference between that and walking in, you know, put yourself in their shoes. I don't want to be in their shoes. If I'm in their shoes, my feet are going to hurt. The reality is that if you can think about your readership, and for example, and I want to use photographers because that's one industry that I know extremely well. If you think about photographers, the target audience is mom. Women make 98% of the purchase decisions to hire a photographer in the portrait social categories. Now, that changes when you get into commercial and aerial, aerial photography, architectural, uh, product photography. But the reality is for, for the world in terms of family portrait, um, weddings, it's mom and the bride when it comes to weddings. So you look at all of that, you say, all right, what do they feel? What are they looking for? Um, what is it that they want? And right now, I don't think any business is any different than photographers out there in that your readership is looking to know whether or not that you can be trusted. With a mom, it's going to be, do I trust my photographer to get the kind of images that I want in my family? For a restaurant owner or a business owner, it's do I trust them to be able to, to be maintaining important health issues right now? But at the same That's time, right. everybody wants to get back on track to a point. So where's the compromise position in what a business owner can offer and at the same time, appeal to your clients. And that's where when you're writing your blog, you want to be able to share your heart. You want to be able to share your concern for the community. You want to be able to share all the things that you're doing as a business owner that helped you build the reputation as a, as a great restaurant, as a great dry cleaner, drugstore. Um, a realtor right now has got such an important message to be out there. And I know, I know that uh, Yovi's going to talk about um, is this a buyer's market or seller's market? But the point is, those relationships that we've all had with our realtors over the years, it's another resource for the community. So as a realtor and having a blog, not only would I be talking about housing and exciting things going on in, finan in financing, but I'd be talking about events going on in the community and what's happening in the school system and what are those issues that mom and dad are most interested in oh, good point. In the community and buying a house. I'm sorry. I got off on a 
so no, that's fun. okay. No, that's a good yeah. point. It's uh, you're, one of the things you brought up was the content and whether there's something to write about or not. And it's not just in, in the case of a realtor, it's not just the technology, te- uh, technical issues of buying a house. It is community and the schools. And that's, that's even more important these days. Well, by the way, the, the one of the top reasons, uh, Jay Conrad Levinson, who's known as the father of guerrilla marketing and passed away a few years ago, he actually coined the words many years ago. And, he talked about community involvement as being one of the top 10 things that guerrilla marketers need to do. And the reason for that is that people like buying products and services from companies they perceive as giving back to the community. That's where I think the, Mm -hmm. the pandemic creates a really interesting opportunity for leaders in the community, not to take risks, but for example, I'm on the board here of the senior friendship centers in, um, in Sarasota, and we did we did over a quarter of million meals on wheels um, last year. Well, that number has skyrocketed because of the number of people that are senior citizens that can't get out or they're afraid to get out right now, and that's created a leadership opportunity for the friendship centers. Well, it's no different in any community where you've got business people that are recognized as leaders being more involved and doing things that you can support your community just gives you that extra edge. And it gives people that, that impression that you want them to have, because yep. let's, let's face it, you know, you're looking for the community to be good to you. So you better make damn well sure you're being good to your community. Yeah. And in these times and the uncertainty of the future, that's, uh, that's pretty important. And that's, That's it. By the way, the hardest thing I think I've ever had to do in business is do a presentation in 10 to 12 minutes. (laughs) I've got a a reputation of death by PowerPoint and try to limit it down. (laughs) Good stuff. Good content. Thank you so much.